summer and she had full, full sun. Um, and she was perhaps not the best gardener in the world. So <laughs> she asked me to do some maintenance of this plant, which I did. Um, but you're looking at Mandevilla in there, some really lovely purple and white verbena. Um, there's actually a beautiful, it's hard to see, actually it's a sedum that's tucked up in the corner there. And um, there's actually um, a rose, I, I don't know if I already said this or not, but there's a rosemary in there as well. And a little tiny splash of a little tiny petunia. Um, and this actually started out really tiny as a small container. So this is probably you know, a month and a half into its growing cycle. Unfortunately, as soon as I stopped caring for it, it died very promptly. And of course she was upset, but you do have to water live plants. So sadly for her, that didn't work out well. Okay, moving on. Um, so this a set of uh, containers, and there are multiples of these. This is a good demonstration of what you can do with a very limited container um, but getting like enormous, enormous bang for your buck, like huge results. So this container is seriously one of my favorites and I can point to it here. So you're looking at like a combination again of like very few plants, but it, it's enormous. So you're looking at a, a chartreuse potato vine with some of that beautiful white verbena. That's a trailing verbena. So if you're gonna use verbena, there's upright and trailing. So the trailing is what I'd recommend for this kind of container. You're also going to be looking at um, begonia. Now, is this okay for you if I'm looking over there? Okay, okay. Um, this beautiful, very sweet, gorgeous little begonia, a small little beautiful floret blooms. And then um, you're looking at some purple uh, rubina um, up on the right-hand corner with some very straightforward white petunias. And this coleus, typically, I'm not a huge fan of the blooms. I often will snip them off, and most people will snip them as well if they're outside. But honestly, I think that that kind of added like an extra act, a sort of um, architectural component of interest. And so I left it for my clients. Full sun. You have to stay on top of the watering. And I will talk about containers um, after this set of uh, pictures. Um, this is just a little shot of a, of a small little micro uh, garden that I did, and she loved pinks. So you'll notice that there's um, the cranes, bell, geranium, just and like really beautiful, just a quick shot of like a lovely, beautiful um, uh, peony. This is actually that same garden. So she loved like colors of kind of like the Southwest desert. So it was a lot of hot, super hot colors. And this is actually on High Street in Portland, and she every season would have me pull out a lot. There's a lot of annuals in there, which honestly is not my favorite way to do plantings, frankly, but sometimes you have to defer to the client. Um, but it was fun. This was a, this was um, probably, I think we're heading towards maybe like uh, the end of July, possibly. Um, again, simple, like beautiful container. My point in showing these to you is that I, I'm, I think that I've heard that m many of you are very sophisticated gardeners. So um, my, my point in showing you this is that you can do so much with, um, with less. You know, there's essentially four plants in there. There's a creeping Jenny, which is a perennial, which, you know, was kind of petering out at the end of its season. That's actually a New Guinean patient, which started as, I think, three small plants. Um, that's a rubrum grass with that beautiful, gorgeous seed head. And then again, I have that like really gorgeous coleus. And you can see that I um, was interested in to see how like, like architecturally how that all worked together. I think that's a successful planter because you have so many different things going at the same time and yet it's a pretty cohesive um, look. That's my takeaway on that. I'm not sure how you think, but um, these are just some really simple spring planters. Just this is in honor of what we hope will come soon. <laughs> Let's all just cross our fingers. Um, and this this one again is like, again, um, a client that I really uh, like wanted to honor her um, vision of containers. And I really struggled to work with her because she really was like, I don't really want blooms. I really want less. I want, and I was like, okay, let's talk about this because what I do is work with blooms, right? But she was just really adamant and she's a, she was an extremely sophisticated woman beautiful taste, beautiful house. Um, so I was like, well, let's 
let's talk about it. So anyway, my point is, is that you can do a lot with that. So there's actually just a basic ivy. There's one begonia. There's a hookerella. Um, it's actually a coral bells hookerella. Um, and I'll, it's that beautiful sort of dark magenta leaf. There's a cat mint up in the corner. That's a walker's low variety cat mint. And then there's a, it's called the prince tut. It's an annual. There's a king tut and a prince tut, but that's a smaller a smaller uh, variety of that particular plant. Um, and I really liked it. So, and sometimes, you know, with clients, I have to really like defer and I, and that's okay. It's a growing experience for me too. Long story short, I ended up really liking this container. So, um, simple, um, again, sun. I've, I don't know why there's not shade planters. So we, we can talk about that if people have questions after I can throw out some ideas for shade planters. Um, potato vine. Um, Petunias, simple, pretty, easy. Um, beautiful, simple wedding that somebody had a concrete urn. They wanted me to do so simple. There actually was borage in this one. There's a picture of that one coming up. That was borage got cut away, but that's actually a little sensation cosmos and some purple verbena. And there's something else that I'm having. It's a mystery plant, which I'm trying to identify for life of me cannot identify. But honestly, like, Sometimes like so simple is so beautiful and full sun and lots of water. Um, you can't even see the container. This one is gorgeous. Um, again, this is, um, are you folks familiar with, uh, with Napata catmint? Yes, mostly yes. So people know that it's like an incredibly versatile workhorse, right? It will perform for you all season. You only have to cut it back once and you know, midsummer you can share it. It's called a Chelsea chop. I don't know if you're familiar. You would be familiar with that expression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oops, we I skipped over. Oh, goodness, let me go back if I can. We'll see if that will work. Nope, maybe not. Oh, hold on. Anyway, I will. Anyway, so you saw that image. I'm going to stay here for a second. Just pretend you're not seeing that. That last image that we were looking at. That nepetus, great. It was had uh, petunias and there was maybe the coleus. Point is beautiful, simple. We're going to get out of that. Hold on one second here. Okay, let me try something. Oh, hold on. Yep, we're there. We're going to try we're going to do this right now. Yeah, got it. Okay, um, this one's fun. So this is a, um, a Rubecchia climbing vine. Um, and I, I had a client that, this is actually an accounting firm, but he had like a secret wild side and he was like, go crazy. So I was like, really? I don't know if your clients are gonna, he's like, no, go crazy. So um, I was like, okay, that's fine. So anyway, this thing was, it got to be enormous. This was like halfway through the growing season. Not my favorite design, frankly. It's not particularly fabulous, but it, it did have like a life of its own. And it, again, and just sort of showing you like what you can do with a small amount of space. I mean, you let certain things go, they will go crazy. You just have to take care of them. Um, oh, there we are again. There it is. Okay, so again, so we have the nepeta, coleus, verbena, petunias, different kinds of petunia, and there was some other things hiding in there. There was a rubrum, and there was actually um, a, a stone, oh my gosh, it was a sedum, stone crop sedum, which you can't see right now, but um, they were very happy, and uh, this ended up being enormous, so. Uh, we're, oh, I think we... Look. Arrow the other side. Yes. I, yep. Hold on. Let's do this. Let's see. We may actually have gone through all of them, frankly. We, I'm not sure. Yep. Yep. I got it. Thank you. Yep. We're going here. Let's just keep moving. Oh. I anticipated some technical difficulties, so I'm not too alarmed. All right. Anyway, um, this is uh, this is also another planter from one of the, the same families that had me do um had me do the other ones that looked like this and again you can see that trailing verbena is just like gorgeous and amazing so um so i think you can see that i have a certain kind of design aesthetic that more is more which is awesome for me not everybody likes that i do um so if you're someone that wants to have like a super scaled back container um then i'm going to move this up a little so you can hear me so here we go then uh sorry folks here let's try that um, interesting. This, yes, okay. Okay, so anyway, 
you just can, you know, this was completely covered up at the end of the season. So for me, that's a win. That's what my clients typically want. They want that. Um, that's that image again, that there's a different image with the, so this one has borage, which you can see it's kind of hiding, but it had tons and tons of beautiful borage. And just so you know, uh, medicinally borage is good for, it has lots of omegas. I mean, borage oil, you're probably familiar, co-op has it, you know, um, and uh, it's, it's a really wonderful herb. Um, there was some alyssum in here and some lobelia that got pretty spent by the time this picture was taken. Not a huge fan, I'm gonna keep moving on. More of those, again. So I think Christmas planters, don't wanna take up too much time with this. Um, yeah, so this is just a little sweet picture from my own house, just mandevilla and a, you know white, white begonia. Some cosmos, that rose crop sedum. And this was actually a pineapple sage, which literally smelled like hot pineapple. So if you're not a fan, don't use it. It was popular, I think it's about 2011. It was like all the rage. Um, this was done for the bank, a TD bank in Portland. These were enormous planters. My sister actually helped me. <laughs> she was awesome. I was like being really bossy and she, she dealt with it. Um, so they just wanted some really basic, straightforward plantings, which I was like, okay. Um, sometimes you just, you just do what people want. So these were, um, you know, mums asters and ornamental cabbage okay i think we're back okay so i'm going to try and get out of here if i can successfully do that yep okay and then i'm going to quickly go to um some images that i'm just going to let you that are going to like run through for you but you oops sorry okay those are again enormous these are going to spiral through but you know you guys can just take a take a look that was a big, huge basket. It's very pretty, fun to do. Similar planters with that sun. Mexican sunflowers, so pretty. The cosmos, really pretty. And these were an, an for Aurora provisions that used to be in Portland. It's not there anymore. A pretty fall planter. And that's how that one planter started out, which got to be enormous, so. So, okay, I think we kind of saw a lot of the images there. So I think we're good for that. So I think I'm gonna move on to the next piece. Yeah. And I should, should I get out of the way for you? Yeah, you can just go okay. over there. Okay, will do, will do. Okay. Actually, excuse me. Awesome. Um, I know, lights. Help everyone. Ah, uh, does anybody have any questions before I move on? And if you don't have them now, we can save them till later. Yes. Yeah. It will. It will grow tubers. It really will, and they they get quite large. Um, I don't think I've never considered like eating them. Um, frankly, it's a really yeah. I've definitely dug them out and been like, what is going on? And so um, you do they will um, definitely compete for space a bit so but they are amazing i do advise using them and there's also a really gorgeous really almost like a black potato vine it's so beautiful um okay um you know what i'm just so i did want to i think you all have maybe some interest in main like the main pollinating plants i think that's why some folks are here tonight so i don't have images of these unfortunately but i can certainly talk about them and um, try to answer questions that are the best of my ability. But um, I did my own research because I'm interested in this myself and wanted to find some like really strong plants that are like hardy. And, and actually the whole point of this is that they can perform in the first season, you can put them in a container and then you wanna pop them out and put them into your landscape. So, um, but I'm, we're talking about this, right? Because we all know that biodiversity is a huge problem. This is, you probably can tell more about them than I can. But um, but there are really important ways to add, like even in your own yard, it's amazing what you can do. And you probably all really know that's why you're here. Uh, but I was stunned to see like the amount of uh, difference one person can make if they wanna go ahead and plant native plants. And some people are like, I don't like the way they look, they're not attractive, which I don't know how that came to be. It's not true. They're quite stunning and beautiful. Um, so anyway, without further ado, the first one I came up with was um, Minarda Bee Balm. 
um, cantata, let me see if I can say this, cantata funcatata. <laughs> it's a, a beautiful, it's a spotted bee bomb. Has any, is anyone familiar with that one? You are, yes, yes, okay. So, and I was actually, this is a new one for me. It's really beautiful. It sort of has like this enormous stock of blooms and it's so unusual. It almost looks like Dr. Seuss. It's like beautiful. A um, Couple of things about it that are of note, pink and silver foliage, pollinators love it. Um, and that it's just, it can be a beautiful, and that one actually will do quite well in a container in the first season. So that will do well. So you can pop that in a container. You will want to keep it really moist, part shade, part sun, but it will do well for you. Unlike some of these other ones, you have to wait and see how they do. Um, Joe Pieweed, people know what that one is, right? It's so cool. What a neat plant, right? Um, so I'm going to try this again. Um, Eurythium, uh, that's it. Uh, grows in damp soil, uh, damp meadows, grows to be approximately eight feet tall, four feet wide. Um, and it can grow even larger than that. So if you get a, give it enough space, it's going to get so enormous. And it has that beautiful seed head. The thing about the, the Joe Pye weed is that the pollinators go crazy. And you've probably seen this where if you go up to the seed of a, you know, the head of a Joe Pye weed, it has everything, right? It has sweat bees. It has uh, flies, which are important. It has uh, bumblebees, wasps, the whole deal, right? So biodiversity, awesome. Um, yes. There are shorter varieties. Yep, I was just, so thank you for bringing that up. And actually what you can also do, which is not great, but you can actually grow it in a drier soil and it will not grow to as full of a height. You sort of are staggering its habit a little bit. Um, summer sweet is also like a beautiful native plant. Plethora anifolia. And if you want me to spell these, I can because I wrote them down. <laughs> Uh, which is good for me because I wouldn't be able to do that without looking at it. Okay, um, beautiful, beautiful white flowers. They often will form to spread a thicket um, and or shrub, shrub basically. And they do spread by rhizomes. So um, often will grow well by ponds. These are all actually, so unlike what we just saw here, these are all kind of like wet, moist, loving plants. And again, you really can grow them in containers. People are like, no, you can't, you can, you can. For the first season, then take them out. Um, let's see, uh, grows well by ponds, edge of the water, and they are a late season, late, excuse me, late season blooming shrub, um, late August, September. Um, and these ones can also grow to be eight feet tall, so big. Um, people are familiar with the cardinal flower? People know these plants, yeah, okay. So this is not a whole lot of new news for you all, but still something to ponder, right? Have any of you grown them in containers? No, so there you go, I'm bringing you something new. Okay, good, good. Okay, uh, Lobelia cardinalis. Um, and you know that crazy scarlet red. Does anybody know like who the biggest fan of these plants are in the bird family? Hummingbird, hummingbird. But yeah, <laughs> thanks for the contribution. Yeah, well, because of course, it's, yes you are. Um, because of course cardinals, excuse me, hummingbirds, your problem, um, hummingbirds are, um, drawn to the color red. So uh, scarlet red flowers, um, grows in late summer, flowers in late summer, excuse me, loves damp soil, um, grows in full sun, and uh, four feet tall, and then cut this one back um, in the fall. And it does have the conical flowers. Um, and this was news to me, even though it shouldn't be, because I think about, we, I think it mean we all see ferns and we think, oh, beautiful. But I actually love the maidenhair fern, but I had no idea it was native. So such a beautiful, beautiful fern. Um, and uh, let me try if I can, let's see. Uh, Adenon, A-D-A-N-T-U-M, I'm not gonna try it. Um, Pendatutum, pendatitum, forgive me. Okay, plants um, have lovely frond structure, grow in woodland settings, uh, most moist soil, and can pr provide ground cover, um, spreads quickly. It's deciduous. So it's a beautiful option for ground cover. Um, anyone familiar with Northern Sea Oat, that beautiful grass? No, oh my gosh, I feel so, okay. <laughs> okay, I think I can get this one. Let's see, um, maybe not. 
I sure can. Northern sea oats. It's actually a, yeah, it's a perennial grass. Northern sea oats. Sea oats. Just it, it, sea oats. Yes. Yep. Sea oats. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. I wish I could pronounce this. Mantenium latifolium. Yes. Okay. Beautiful, delicate grass. You, you, I'm sure you've seen them. They're very, they have these beautiful, um, delicate seed heads. Yeah, you know, you probably could explain it better than me. <laughs> and um, they provide like a lot of um, moving structure in your landscape. So they're really billowy and you can almost use them as like a quasi screen for uh, plants behind. If you want that, that visual impact of almost like a Monet painting or Cezanne or something where you're just getting like the feeling for the plants behind. It's really beautiful. Um, and this one also is uh, amazing for, um, I'm sorry, for, for obviously birds and bees, everyone loves it. Um, it has ornamental seed heads and a vertical growth habit. Um, people are, I'm sure, familiar with the winterberry holly, of course, right? But you know, it's interesting. This one is really great for the robins, the cedar wax uh, wings, the blue and blue jays love him um, because the berries are quite packed with nutrients. So I won't go on about that one. And bottle brush buckeye, familiar? Yes, no, sort of, yes. Um, Asulius parvifloria uh, blooms approximately in the first week of August. Um, this one is really important because it's an uh, excellent food source for the uh, swallowtail butterfly. So, and that's a really important, we need to think about that butterfly actually. Um, bumblebees grows in full to part shade, full sun to part shade. It gets huge, 12 to 15 feet tall and 10 to feet wide, uh, excuse me, 10 to 12 feet wide. So it's enormous. This is a commitment guys. So if you don't have the space, don't, don't do it. Um, but you know, you can start out with a little one and then you could pop it out in the landscape if you have space. I mean, my point in saying all of this is like some folks that live in town probably don't have a lot of options to have like enormous swaths of Maine natives, but one, two, three, four, five plants provides food, right? And biodiversity, which I guess Rudolf Steiner came up with that idea. And you're all probably somewhat familiar, I'm guessing. Of course you are, everyone's familiar. Um, so we're all making our own contribution in the small way we can, right? Um, and then uh, the last plant I picked, of course, everyone loves the, the echinacea, uh, propolia, propella, excuse me, the purple cone flower. Uh, we know them. this grows to be four feet tall, but it's amazing. You know, all those little tiny seeds, flowers basically, are so good for the finches, butterflies, bumblebees. So that was a lot, um, but it looks like a lot of folks are really familiar with those. But I really would encourage you to take like, even if it's just one that you think would be fun to grow and pop it in a container, put it in by itself. I maybe wouldn't recommend combining this with other plants, but if you have, you know, an old pot, old container that you just think it's lending itself to something fun, I would try. And obviously you have a lot of knowledge about these other plants that are native, so try those. I just wanted to encourage that. Or how much, how much time do we have? I just want to make sure that, I, I mean, I have plenty of time. Okay, so I, I guess I have time to do this container. I'm going to stop there though. Questions? And if not, that's fine. Yeah. Bottle, yep. Is the bottle brush plant the same? Wow. Is the bottle brush plant the same thing as the butterfly bush or is that yes. different? It is. As, as far as I know, that's actually, it, it made, it, as far as I know, that is a similar, I mean, excuse me, the same plant. That's my understanding. Um, I'm still familiarizing myself with that with that plant as well, but um, and the species of butterfly, you know, bushes I'm not totally familiar with. So yeah, the monarch butterflies love that. Yes, they do. Um, my now deceased mother in law had one, and I was there one day. It was just covered, covered. With monarch butterflies. Oh, it's amazing! Oh, it's beautiful, and that's such a good example of. I mean, one of one of those, you know, beautiful plants covered with butterflies. And you said it was your mother-in-law? Oh, mm -hmm. I can see that it's touching for you. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I, ha I have a question yeah. back on the containers you showed pictures of, Rebecca. Yes. You showed pictures of daffodils. Yes. In containers. Yes. 
Um, do you plant them as bulbs in the fall? That's a, so that's a cheat on my end. So I buy those that are um, from greenhouses that are, oh, I'm sorry, you can though. The, those from the picture were, were purchased from a greenhouse in Southern Maine, but definitely you can plant them. You can keep them in a cool location. You okay, can. so if but if you plant the bulbs in a container in the fall, yep, um, you have to overwinter them like in a garage or somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I think it's hit or miss. Honestly, some people are really have great luck with that. Have any of you folks done that before? Grown them like that? No. Yeah, it's really I've done it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, yes, I have watered them. But it's, you know, it's strange. It's sort of like, um, well, it's interesting because they will be dormant and dormant and dormant and dormant. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's alive. It looks completely like you're like, no, there's no hope. This is definitely not going to happen. And then all of a sudden you see something happening. So, yeah. Um, okay. I guess I'll move on to the last part of our talk. There are no questions online. Yet. Okay. Um, so this is a typical, or this is a demonstration, I'm going to do a demonstration of something that I would offer as like a gift planter to a client that would, I get calls on the phone and people will say, I have a daughter or son who's turning 30 or whatever it is, a new baby in the family. Can you make me a gift planter? So part of my design model with the eco, it's an eco-friendly floral design model is that I'm trying to, in my own way, um, make a difference because as you know, cut flowers as much as I love them are horrific for uh, the footprint, <laughs> bad footprint that are huge, you know. Um, and there's also poisons and toxins. And again, I, I love cut flowers, but it is not, um, it's rather deleterious to uh, the health of the planet. <laughs> um, but so anyway, this is my little contributions. And I've been quite successful, frankly, with this. Uh, people have found me from all over, from like Israel and Europe, and it's amazing. I'm very fortunate. Um, so anyway, without further ado, this is sort of like a um, part sun, part shade planter. And if you can't see and you want to come up, feel free. Yeah. Or if you can stand up or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I have a little ornamental bike. I thought I'd pop in. <laughs> um, this is actually a button fern. So pretty. Love it. Love it. Um, just a little English ivy. And forgive me, this is actually, I know it as the lettuce plant. It's not very happy right now. I think it's really cold in my car. Don't have the um, Latin name, unfortunately. And I have these beautiful, sweet, gorgeous little African violets, which, you know, typically um, you don't plant them with other plants. You keep them, as you know, they will get watered from below. But interestingly enough, I found that these can do okay in larger containers. They do okay. They, in fact, do quite well if you um, fertilize them. And this is just a grocery store begonia, but so pretty. <laughs> um, so I'm going to pull out. Um, let me not give you too much static here. Um, people familiar with this product, the Biotone? OK, I do all my planters. I start them all with this. So this is a really important part of plant success. Um, and this is actually um, a spoma is an organic soil. Um, and I'm not endorsing this. I don't have any like kickbacks or anything. So and there's also Coast of Maine, which is like a, a remarkable product. Really awesome. Um, I just want to make sure I mention everything that I need to mention with this. Uh, but even though this is like a great product to start out with, you want me to, I can show, and you can come up afterwards if you have any questions. Um, this is a great product, but you still have to fertilize them. You really do, or you're not going to end up with like these enormous blooms. So Pretty straightforward. My design method is basically, I try to go for structure, floral interest, and something that's gonna you know, create um, some visual impact or something that's gonna be um, kind of almost working in tandem with each other. So these two, this color combination, like the light green and the dark, it's really nice. And then of course, you know, this like really pretty bloom will get bigger and such a pretty, combination. So again, though, the whole point in this is to like have fun, experiment, but these will all coexist well together because they all share habitat. Um, they all want to live in a similar kind of way. And again, even those African violets will do 
they'll do okay. Um, if I can ever open this bag, which may not happen. Okay. All right. So you're going to be like, I'm going to start a business too. <laughs> you could. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me about the pot and whether or not um, you've got holes in the bottom yep. and if there's any rocks under there? Thank or you. What a good question. Thank you so much. There is a hole. This, is, this pot is was handmade for me. It's so beautiful by a potter in Portland. She was lovely. She's no longer with us. Um, but it has a hole. There's no need for rocks. Rocks are really overrated, actually, frankly. it's But I know I always thought that they were good as well. But um, un they're really unnecessary if you have a hole. Um, yeah, but you know, a container with a hole, yes, very important. Um, and I'm not the person who's going to measure out the uh, fertilizer. I don't do that. You kind of, you kind of, you know, you're not going to want to dump a whole bag of this in. I would say go ahead and dump like, I don't know, quarter, maybe not that much, like three teaspoons or so of fertilizer. I don't know, maybe get away with about that much. And it's okay, you can touch it with your hands, it doesn't burn, it won't sting. And you can just pretend you're making a chocolate cake. And it's kind of fun. Okay. But you do want to work it into the soil, make sure it gets um, to the bottom. And this fertilizer builds up the soil, the mycorrhizomes of the soil. Of the soil. And I always tell folks, and I, again, I'm sure you guys know this, but um, just like, you know, the healthy, you know, body has, we need healthy blood. It's, you know, you need healthy soil to help your plants, you know, perform. Um, so I'm basically going to, I'm going to put this guy in first. You're really going to be like, what? This takes like one second. But <laughs> um, it's a little hard for me to see what, what's going on in the front here, but I'm going to sort of try to see what I'm, I usually look at it from another angle. But anyway, um, I'm going to put this one towards the back. You might think you put it towards the front, but you don't. So decide what your back is going to be. You're just going to make a well. You know, make sure that you know it's in there solidly. But don't hurt, don't hurt the roots, but just fir firmly planting in there. You know, make sure it's all covered up. And I'm going to probably go in with the begonia next. And the nice thing about this too is that um, if you don't like the way it looks, you can do it again. That's fun. The fun part. So, um, but I'm trying not to make a mess for these folks that have to be in the library. So. Um, I don't typically do this, but I, I'm going to do this tonight. So sometimes, and this looks really awful and mean, but I'm going to rip off the, some of the roots because of the shallowness of this container. And it'll be okay. It'll be okay, right? But it's, it says it's okay. It's okay. Um, and I'm going to tuck it a little bit actually underneath the, um, the fern. It'll be like peeking out. So cute. So... And you can decide, you know, again, what direction you want to, you know, put that flower. So I'm going to head it towards the, this is going to be the back of my container. So I kind of like this look right here. You know, if you're thinking of aesthetics, you know, you just kind of want to think about how it's looking. I am sorry about the dirt. Forgive me. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go in with this little guy next. This poor thing needs water. I'm not going to rip on these roots because this plant is already having, it's under distress. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to just, we're going to make space for it. I'm not sure what this looks like from your angle, but, you know. Trying not to make a mess here. Okay. I'm going to take one of these little adorable, I have these tiny little mushrooms. They're so cute. So um, you can also, if you want to, you can keep them in the containers and plant them in the soil directly, which I think I will do. That way they won't get super saturated with water. But I sort of have this method where I like to kind of plant underneath. It's like very sweet. This is actually like a little kind of like a, um, a fairy garden. So kind of want things peeking out a little bit, you know. I said I was going to keep it in the container. I'm not. Change my mind. Rebecca, <laughs> can I ask, where did you get those cute little tiny African violets? Yeah, I got them at, again, not, not endorsing the greenhouse. I, they're lovely, but um, Plants Unlimited. They actually have a whole, I would, if you're interested, they have all different colors right now. They're really, really pretty. So cute. So really sweet. Is it looking no, good? My... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. 
My understanding is that African violet leaves can't get wet. That is correct. You're so right. How you, do you, yeah, you manage that in an outdoor container? Oh, or I don't this, put them in outdoor. This is like a, this is an in, indoor. Yep. Yep. But you can actually water around the leaves. Um, and you actually, if you, if you, you can even spray. I mean, it's a little high maintenance. That's why um, you need to be a little bit more of a, of a, um, someone that understands plants, you know, I don't, I wouldn't typically use African violets for a client that wanted like a really basic container because they would be, they would end up probably hurting the, being sad. <laughs> it, plant wouldn't do so well. Um, give me one second here. I got to see kind of what I'm doing, but yeah. And then I have one more little guy over here. Um, and sometimes what happens is I end up wanting to keep them myself, but I don't. I just make myself one after. I've kept one before that I couldn't part with, and I still have it. <laughs> I still have it. All right. So I typically would pack this a little fuller, but I'm not going to do that for the sake of time and for the sake of the mess. But um, typically, I would top this with moss, which I don't have right now. Forgot to bring it. Um, but you can see it's a really so this will do really well. Even this ivy, which is actually sun loving, um, will tolerate this condition. This is going to be a part shade, part sun container that will live on someone's bureau or table, um, kitchen table. Um, and I'm ex really actually excited to see. I'm going to probably I am going to keep this. Plus, maybe my sister will get it. I don't know. I know she might end up with it. Um, but you know, I often will also experiment. I want to see. You know, I have grown African violets like this before, but I want to see how these little guys do. Oh, no, that's OK. That's OK. Maybe some lucky person will get this. You know. um, I also brought these in. I don't think I'm going to use them, but, you know, pussy willows do add. Should I use them? People want me to use them? Yeah. OK, let's do it. Let's do it. If I can cut through here. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Let's take like. Isn't that sad? I was asked that earlier. I, the ones outside are, you know, covered in, in ice and actually looking terrible. Um, these do add, you know, these do add a lot of like fun to a container. Um, let's see. They're just, they're so sweet. So pretty. In fact, you can do more than three. I'm just for the sake of time, you know. So Rebecca, I have a question. Yes. Won't the um, pussy willows bloom too from being in the soil? Like no. They don't? No, they won't bloom. This is if you put them in water, they do. Yeah, no, okay. they won't They won't bloom at this point. They're kind of going to do what they're going to do. Um, I would keep going on this guy. This is not exactly how I would normally do this, but I want to make sure that, um, well, I guess we're doing pretty well. I think we're just about wrapping up here. So um, anyway, how does that look? That's sweet. Okay. Yeah. But typically I would put in more of these, but I think I won't for sake of time. But um, anyway, thank you all for coming out tonight. And I hope it was interesting. You learned something. Any more okay. questions? Uh, it's a button fern. Yeah. It's a button fern. Yeah. So the, um, that's just for, um, for temporary, the, um, you know, the ones you just put in, the, the, the pussy willows. Yes, they're just decorative yeah. and- um, they, won't, um, they won't start to, because I, I hear yeah. that they can be, um, you know, they can take, like you were saying, they can start to, to they grow too. I've never had, you know, they've never had that happen, strangely. And you know, you can force them, I know, in water. Strangely, I know, I've heard that before. I've never seen that. But... Pussy willows root really well. They're a willow. Right, of course. And when I want to start a new pussy willow bush, I just take a, a stem that has forked and put it in water and start a new bush. That's wonderful. And if you don't keep them trimmed, they will get... Crazy. I, the first one I ever planted got to be two stories. It went up to the third story of the oh my house. God. It just got cut down last oh fall. Oh, my God. It was like a huge... huge That's incredible. Thing. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Okay. I don't have luck with that. I think I, we need to talk to the pussy willows. And you do. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, thanks. Well, there are no questions online, right? <laughs> yeah. That's great. Okay. Yeah.
Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's nice. Get home safely tonight. Drive safely or walk safely. Thank you.